Welcome back to my kitchen, Gigi's Kitchen, where you get to learn all new recipes, new tips, and prepping, and just having a good time cooking. We're going to make up a stew today. It's a wonderful fall day, and it's overcast and a bit rainy, so today's the perfect day to put on a stew in a big pot on the stove. This is not an Instapot stew, and let it simmer three or four hours till it cooks down, the beef is tender, the potatoes are tender, and then we serve it up with some cornbread. It's a wonderful way to spend an afternoon watching a movie, reading a book, or just taking a nap, which is what I want to do. But anyway, let's cook. Okay, we've got our big stew pot on the burner, medium low to medium high, just depends. I'm gonna add a little bit of my oil to the bottom. And we've got our beef ready to go. I have already cut it up. It was a two and a half to three pound chuck roast. And I went ahead and I cut it into large chunks. I like mine to be fairly large, as you can see. Uh, large chunk. I went ahead and kept the little pieces because I just throw them in for flavor. But if you cut them really small, by the time you get done, your your beef is going to be so small, it's not even going to be bite sized it, so it will shrink. So I've also already floured it, dredged it in flour, salt and peppered it, and it's ready to go. And I do this on a parchment. So we'll do it in batches. We'll do one batch, then we'll do another batch. And that should do it. And then we'll put it all back in there after we saute our mirepoix. And then we will add everything in and then bring it to a good boil. Spread that around a bit across the bottom. So we're like, well, why, why do we need to do this? Why can't we just put the meat in, put the water in? We want to build some fond on the bottom of this pan because that's going to give us some extra beefy flavor. When we fry this up, it will make a crispy bottom. And then that will help give us more flavor. I do not plan to put any stock in my stew. This beef should be enough to flavor itself. Let's see. Yep, there we go. And I like to leave it where there's plenty of room so they don't steam each other. Now we're not trying to cook these through. Now you could do this in the Instapot if you wanted to. You would put it on saute, brown everything off, take it out, um, add all your veggies and your broth and your stock or whatever you're gonna put in there. Add it, put it back on high pressure, cook it for at least an hour to an hour and 20 minutes and then let it slow release. That should be enough. And then I put my potatoes in at the end and then run it on high pressure for about another eight minutes. We will basically do the same, but this is going to be a long, slow stew. And we are not adding our potatoes and carrots till we've been into the game about three hours. Once our meat pulls apart very easily, then we will come back and add our potatoes and our carrots, let them continue to cook another 20 to 30 minutes. And once they're tender, then the stew will be ready to eat. So right now we're just gonna spend a little time and brown all this off. And it's not releasing, so it's not ready to turn yet. and get my flame going a little higher, get a little hotter so we can get moving here. And when I make um, beef tips with Guinness, this is basically the same as we start out. So if you want to know how to break down the chuck roast, because this was a chuck roast, it was not stew meat. Um, I find stew meat to not have a, as much flavor as I would have with my chuck roast. So I always go to the chuck roast, buy it whole, and cut it down. 
So if you want to know how to do that, just let me know. And we will make some beef tips because it'll, that's one of the things on the upcoming menu. And I will include that part. So you can see how they're getting crispy. We'll try to do a little on each side. So that looks pretty good to me. I think we're going to start taking them out. Nice and brown. Set it back over here on the little board. All this is going back in. It's still raw in the middle. So I'm not worried about cross-contamination at this point. And I do have a piece of parchment on top of my board. I just don't like to clean all that flour mess. So I usually put a piece of parchment down. You can put foil if you want. I'm trying to use less and less foil these days. All right, next round, going in. And we're gonna start our next round of saute. See all that good fawn built up in there on the bottom? All of that is flavor. That's what we're aiming for. Now I'm gonna throw these in. They're just little ones. I just turned my flame down to low and I'm gonna just put a drizzle of oil in there. And now we're going in with our mirepoix which is our carrots and celery. Now this, and I have two garlics that I've sliced. Now, now I put the celery and the carrots through the chopper because I wanted them to be really fine. So they'll break down and meld with the broth. I have carrots that will be going in at the end in little rings. So right now, we're just gonna saute this up, fry those little bits in there. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, and I'm gonna add some no salt seasoning to the top of this to start layering my flavors. Here's my salt. That's probably about two good pinches. Going in with the fresh cracked ground pepper. Okay. My no salt seasoning. Which has in it my onions and celery, lemon and pepper and all that garden goodness. Now. Oh, that smells so wonderful. You can really smell those onions starting to brown up and caramelize. And I don't really want to caramelize them, but I do like them a little toasty. The next thing is, is you get to choose, do you want to add tomatoes or not? We like our broth, beef broth, in our stew to be a little bit tomatoey based. So I have two tablespoons of double concentrated tomato paste. So I'm going to put it in here so it can fry down too. There we go. I'm going in with one can of diced, petite diced tomatoes and all the juice. That looks perfect. So now we're going to add our beef back in. I'm going to stir it really well. That ah, smells so good. And now we are going to add in our water. I have eight cups of water here, but I'm going to cover it until I get two thirds of the pan full and the beef is covered. Yep. 
just about eight cups. Now, I've got two bay leaves going in. And we're going to get our spoon. And we're going to get this thing going. So I will turn this on. And we will bring it to a nice, good boil. Then we will turn it down and allow it to simmer oh, at least three hours until all the meat, cartilage and the fat and has broken down and the meat pulls apart. Now every once in a while you come by, you stir it. You can skim it if you want to skim it off. So I'm turn my flame back up a little bit. I'm gonna put the lid on this and we're gonna bring it to a boil. Probably take about 10 minutes or so. I can hear our stew boiling, so we'll check it real quick. Oh yeah, there it goes. It's coming along. There you go. And I'm just getting some of this off. There we go. That's probably plenty for now. I'm going to take my spatula here, my metal spatula, and I'm going to go across the bottom and make sure that all that fawn has been deglazed. And it, it has. I can't feel anything on it. It's very slick. So this is ready to turn down to a simmer. And there we go. So we're going to let this simmer for at least two hours. We'll check it in two hours. We'll check it more than that, but I'll come around and stir it and skim it about every 30, 40 minutes. But two hours from now, then we'll check our meat and see how well it pulls apart. And then we will time it from there on to when we want to add our potatoes and our carrots and our corn. And I also leave a vent, a little bitty vent in my lid, just a little bit, just to allow the steam to come through and allow it to reduce. So, there we go. See you back in a little while. Okay, we've been simmering for about 45 minutes now, so I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off. We're going to skim it a little bit, stir it a little bit. Put it back on the burner for another 45 minutes. And it smells wonderful. I don't really think there's a lot of fat on here to skim off. We could go around the edges, I guess. But it's reducing already, so that's a good thing. And it just smells so good. Okay, big spoon, big stir. Oh yeah, that is looking so good. All right. Just let it keep going. Put the lid back on. Just a little vent on the side. And it's going back on the simmer burner. See you again in 40 minutes. So we've been cooking two hours now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off for the big reveal here. We can go ahead and do a little skim around the edges. Just like that, and look how much it's reduced. It is cooking down really nicely. And so then we're just gonna give it a good stir and put it back on the simmer burner for another hour, and then we will be done. We're into this stew about three hours now, and I want to do a little reveal here for you. Look at that, yum. Put a lid over there. Get my big spoon. And we're gonna stir this and see how nice and thick 
the gravy is it looks perfect so now that we're there I'm gonna go ahead and take out these bay leaves while I'm tossing this around and then I'm going to we're gonna do a couple things so there we go with our bay leaves and I'm gonna take out a little chunk of this meat now you can see how much that has shrunk down since we have cooked it down braised it all the fat is uh, released out of it and the cartilage is dissolved and soft but I want to put this on the board our piece of roast beef our chuck roast we've cooked it now three hours and then when I go to press on it it just falls apart and you can see that's exactly what we want we want it so soft it just falls apart I'm going to put this back in here and the juices are and our broth is very creamy now I've got here my potatoes my carrots my corn and I'm just now putting them in I didn't want to leave them for three hours because they would just dissolve into mush if I did so I'm going to put these in at this point we will let it simmer for about another 20 30 minutes until the potato and the carrots and the corn is nice and soft and tender now the corn was frozen corn and it's been thawed but I will leave all the juice that comes in there with it so here's my potatoes and I don't know whatever maybe a pound of potatoes I like a lot of potatoes in mine sometimes more potatoes than meat but that's my preference you do what's right for your family and my husband likes celery in his but I didn't add the celery usually I will be adding the celery about this time too, little chunks of celery for him and then the corn goes in and you can add whatever you want I mean green beans work well and um, whatever you would like in your stew but we keep it pretty basic give it a good stir we're gonna get it back on the flame it's still very very hot I can taste it at this time to see if it needs more salt or more pepper and then we can get this simmering back and probably about 20 to 30 minutes at the most we've added our potatoes we've added our carrots and now we have a really good boil on this what I need to do is turn this way down to a very low simmer because otherwise all I'm gonna do is break up my potatoes and they're gonna get all broken apart from the hard boil and we don't want that we want a nice tender potato but one that stays intact the same with the carrots so I'm going to turn it down to a really low simmer we probably got about 15 minutes or so to go and then we'll check it again we're back we've been simmering now for about 23 minutes 25 minutes approximately in that zone um, on a low flame first we brought it to the boil as you saw then we turned it down to a very low simmer and just let it go for about 20 to 25 minutes so let's see what we got oh yeah there we go so I've already tested the potatoes and they are just right on here's one right here and if I put my fork it just goes straight through but still it's held together the skins are still on everything looks so good the same for my carrots and so here we go this is what we got and look at that stew oh that is so wonderful so the way I do this when I go to serve it is I get my bowl I get my slotted spoon and I go in and I dive in and I get me a nice big piece of beef I get a couple of potatoes some carrots some corn put that in my bowl and I'm gonna go for that one more batch right there see now we have all that in our bowl now I can come back with my good thick creamy broth and I can layer that on the top and there we go serve it up with some cornbread and you've got a wonderful beef stew on a nice fall 
day so warm and cozy. Enjoy! You can do this! See you next week! Bye!